Hi guys. So the reason we suffer so much, why? Because we're attached to the identification with this limited self. I just did for the very first time a meditation practicing death. Now the reason I decided to do that was because I was feeling really frustrated with the attachment to the stories of the ego. And I've had a good, you know, a good break from being dropped into hell. And I haven't had those high extremes up into heaven um, over the past few days. So it's been really nice and steady. I've enjoyed, you know, a good amount of time without these massive swings. However, I did have a moment earlier today where the story started to get louder and the attachment to them started to get louder. And so the frustration grew. Now, the reason the frustration grew was because I had the awareness that this is a story that I'm attached to, that I do not need to be attached to it, but still the attachment persisted. So I decided to do an Akashic Records meditation. About halfway through, or say about 20 minutes in, I realized this is not the right one. <laughs> so I opened up my YouTube again and searched for something very different than what I ever would have done before. I've never done a meditation practicing death, but I do know that the Tibetan Buddhists do. They practice dying as a part of their practice. And um, I can't tell you much more about it than that, except that it's supposed to be supportive in detaching from the physical vessel as well as from the mental <clears throat> the mental and emotional bodies now i know the importance of having a relationship with the ego however my liberation the first time i went through my dark night of the soul and my spiritual awakening was not because i took it seriously <laughs> it was because i didn't now, there are so many um, stories out there and narratives of the importance of the ego, and I definitely would not speak it down. Of course, the ego is important for survival. However, <laughs> when we are not attached to the physical vessel, to the mental body, to the ego, to the emotional body, <clears throat> we have the space to experience life without expectation, to experience life without disappointment, to experience life without a destination, because when there's a destination, there's an expectation. When there's an expectation that's not met, there's suffering. And I've questioned, you know, even my book, Journey to Samadhi, um, the somewhat seeming extremes which maybe only seemed extreme because my consciousness had contracted and I had become attached to the ego again. And the ego will do anything it possibly can to survive. That way of viewing the ego, in other words, not taking the story seriously, I will still make a, a, a video on that. I haven't forgotten on the questions that you can ask by Byron Katie in order to create a little bit of distance to create doubt in your mind around the stories that you're telling yourself that are the things that create suffering. Um, but the reason that the suffering had dissipated was because of not taking the story seriously, of not taking the ego seriously, of seeing the ego for what it was, an accumulation of experiences from the past that lead to an interpretation of experiences in the present. Are any of these experiences true? When I say true, I mean according to the interpretation of the ego. No, because if a different ego was experiencing the same thing, it would have a different truth. Truth cannot be changing and flexible. Truth should be unchanging, right? So with this logic, right and and this understanding and still a gentleness with the ego in other words there's no point in fighting it because if you're going to fight it you're treating it as though it is real right 
if you're not fighting it, you're allowing whatever illusion it is wound up in to play out. If you do not engage with the illusion, the illusion weakens. It loses its strength. It loses its position. And eventually it dies on its own. So a bit of wisdom that came out of my very dark meditation <laughs> that felt very liberating um, was the reminder to not take the ego so damn seriously. <laughs> I'm going to leave that with you guys, but I also just want to say that it takes some practice and some time. And because of that, though time is actually not the factor, it takes some intentional practice to create that distance. Um, and sometimes we're not quite ready to hold that perception yet. So what I do want to caution against is the ego taking the stance of nothing is important, everything is an illusion, and causing more harm. So I'm just going to leave that as a little sidebar. But should you be ready to, in a healthy way, um, detach from the illusions of the mind? I'm still in my very meditation-y, sleepy feeling and phase. So mind my very relaxed manner. Um, if you feel ready, then do so with love still to the whole self, but with seriousness and commitment to the truth. I, I don't know who it was. It might have been Buddha um, that said something along the lines of, if you're going to seek for truth, um, then do so as though your whole body is on fire seeking water. And I could be butchering this statement or this, this um, quote, but it's something along those lines. I might even be butchering the person that said it. <laughs> you're going to have to look that one up. But if you're going to look for truth, don't do it half-heartedly. Do it as though your whole self, your whole soul depends on it. Lots of love, guys, and have a beautiful week. Namaste.